Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series here on my channel. I am so excited to be bringing this to you. This has been many months in the making and I'm so hyped. So welcome to the Bug Bounty course. This will be the first video in the Bug Bounty course series. We're going from zero all the way up to finding your first bug and then looking at how you can increase your impact and start to get those higher bounties. So I'm I'm so excited to be bringing you this today. So we're going to start off right at the very start, because actually you'd be surprised how many people don't know quite what bug bounty is and think I'm breaking the law when I tell them what I do. So without further ado, I would first like to thank our series sponsor. It is thanks to Bug Crowd that we could even do this series in the first place. And so this series is sponsored by Bug Crowd. Bug Crowd is the best place to start hacking with a wide range of public and private programs from APIs to desktop applications and everything in between. Not ready to jump into a public program yet? Yeah, fill out your platform CV, sign up for a waitlisted program, tell Bug Crowd a bit about your skills, certifications or experience, and they will match you up with the right program using their industry-leading crowd -match technology. Whatever your level, there is a place for you in the crowd. So welcome to this series. Like I say, this has been many months in the making. This is the 101 course you wish existed just for bug bounty. We're going to take you from zero knowledge, like just getting started, maybe Googling bug bounty hunting for the first time, all the way up to finding your first bug and then beyond how we can get better impacts, better bounties, write better reports and start to become a lot more of a consistent hunter. Now, this is very much based on my experience as a hacker. So this is not coming from like me just guessing what bug bounty hunters do. This is based on a lot of my experience. It's going to be completely free on YouTube. If you're used to some of my older video, you will see that these are going to be much shorter videos, 15, 20 minutes. And when we release a whole bunch of videos, we're then going to do a live stream and you can hack alongside me. I'll be showing you this techniques that I talk about and you can have a go at the same time. So I'm so excited to be bringing this series to you. It's just amazing that Bug Crowd has basically given me the opportunity to do this. So let's talk about what is bug bounty. I think my favorite story is I really like those iceberg videos where people are like, here's the conspiracy theory iceberg. And I was watching one that was like the rabbit holes iceberg. And I think on like the third level, bug bounties was there. And I was like, wow, that's really weird. I would not call that like an iceberg, whatever. So bug bounty hunting is essentially freelance hacking. You find a bug, you get paid on how bad it is. The risk of bug bounty hunting is, of course, if there is no bug, there is no bounty for you. It's not a get rich quick scheme. It's it's like a get rich slow scheme, right? Like, I don't think it's worth getting in here. If you were just looking to make money easily, you need to put a lot of work in to get really good at bug bounty. Though I will say, thankfully, the only investment you need to put in is your time. You don't need to pay any money. You can just get started for free. You don't need to buy a course. You don't need to buy expensive software. You can just start for free and start off by just investing your time. You can make a lot of money. I'm not going to doubt that. I have friends who, you know, do bug bounty full time or who do it alongside their job and are very wealthy people. But you need to put in the time to get that. Like the skill of bug bounty hunting is your intuition. I can't teach you that. I cannot teach you and let you download from my brain. But you can help build your intuition over time, but with practice. A lot of people tend to do this alongside school or as a hobby rather than full time. So people like me who have a full time job who do this on evenings and weekends because it's really fun. It's really enjoyable. It's a nice challenge. And there are, of course, people who do it full time. Not everyone does. And it's not a get rich quick scheme. I really want to say that right out the bat. So if you're just here for money. Choose a different get rich quick scheme because this this is not going to work. Isn't hacking illegal? No. So companies actually sign up for this. So companies will be like, we want to access all the best hackers in the world. So we're going to start make a bug bounty program. Now they give you permission as long as you stay in scope. So staying in scope is a debate all in itself. I'm not going to go into about whether or not scope should even exist in the first place because real attackers don't care about scope. But bug bounty programs essentially say, you know, here's the scope, here's what we'll pay for, please find us vulnerabilities. Now, you may have heard of a VDP, Vulnerability Disclosure Program. 
that's slightly different. A VDP isn't an invitation to like start hacking on them. It's more of a see something, say something program. So if you find a vulnerability in the wild, you can report it to somebody. You're not going to get paid necessarily. But it lets you know where to go to speak to somebody. Both are covered by what are called safe harbor agreements, which is that as long as you are reporting things, they're not going to get any legal anything involved. Now, they may get it involved if you are releasing vulnerability details, but just reporting stuff, it's not illegal. So how much money can you make? Well, it depends on the severity. So Bug Crowd uses this scale that starts at P5, which is a non-issue, to P1, which is the most severe issues. And most programs are somewhere between $100 US and $5,000 US per issue. Though, saying that, if you are going to find something that affects like multiple pieces of software, something that's really, really bad, like remote code execution, arbitrary code execution, it can be higher. And certainly whatever's on a individual like bounty table is not the highest it goes. Now, in this series, we're really going to be focusing more on medium to high issues. So that's like P3 to P2 issues, because these are where I think you can start to become really consistent with them. At least in my experience being a bug bounty hunter, I find the most consistent vulnerabilities I can find are usually P3, medium risk vulnerabilities. I don't really bother reporting low severity issues because I don't really enjoy finding them. I don't really like that challenge. And P1s, you know, it can be quite rare to find. Fundamentally, the, the payouts depend on the client. Some have more budget than others. And any bug can take anywhere from like 30 minutes to weeks to find to exploit. The shortest time. I've ever found to actually found a vulnerability was five minutes, but I only got paid like $50 for it. So, so yeah, like just because you put in tons of time doesn't mean you get a big bounty. And just because you put in a few amounts of time doesn't mean you get a small one. It depends on the severity. It's a question I get a lot. Do I need to learn code, infrastructure slash cloud? No, I don't think so. But I think personally, it's a big advantage. Software nowadays is built very differently than 10 years ago. And it's always like a little kind of pet peeve of mine to see like CTFs that rely on technology that nobody uses in the industry anymore. So I think writing code is a fun hobby and it's very useful. I, I have done several times. I've been like, I need this to be easier. I'll just write some code to do it. I know how to write code. It's fine. Now, cloud and deployment, like how software actually ends up on the internet, is becoming more and more important. Things like CD, CI pipelines, continuous delivery, continuous integration pipelines, Amazon Web Services, Azure, and other clouds hosting really are becoming more important. And when I look at the largest amount of P1 issues, I always see something cloud-related. It's usually credentials. The programming language you choose doesn't really matter because what you actually want to develop is something called computational thinking, thinking like a computer how you think about problems, how you work through those problems. And again, it's building up that intuition because bug bounty hunting really relies on intuition. There's plenty of people who say you don't need to learn how to code, you don't need to know infrastructure, that they didn't. But I will say I think it is an advantage. I really do. But that is my opinion. I do stress that. So a lot of you were thinking, isn't that just a penetration test? And no, bug bounty is way more competitive since you're working against the clock. So in a penetration test maybe you have a few weeks or a few days to actually conduct a test in bug bounty hunting it is the first to find so the first person to find a vulnerability is the one who gets paid for it targets are far more hardened by the time you get to a bug bounty program you've had tons of penetration tests targets are going to be more hardened they are going to have harder scope but because of things like continuous delivery continuous integration where code gets shipped almost every day they might have a six monthly pen test but a bug bounty program that accepts reports you know year round clients in a bug bounty situation are not looking for compliance they're not looking to find out oh this could be more secure they're looking for impact they're looking for somebody to scare them essentially 
and be like, oh my god, I didn't realize that was even public. Now, scanners are limited in bug bounty hunting. I personally don't use scanners. I have never seen scanners work very well in a bug bounty situation because if they did they could have just had a scanner, they would have just run that scanner in the first place. So I personally don't think scanners are really helpful, but again, that's my opinion. A lot of people do set up automation platforms where they use scanners as part of it. Platforms like BugCrowd also offer pen test programs as well. That is essentially where a hacker can sign up as a pen tester, especially if they already have pen testing certificates like the OSCP, and they can then use that to kind of demonstrate more compliance, and then you get paid based on time not just the vulnerabilities you find and a lot of you will be thinking why even use a platform like bug crowd when you're sitting between you and a client so the idea is is that platforms yeah they sit between the program and the hacker in terms of what they offer for for like individuals it's things like triages things like sorting out payments it's things like making that process really easy, giving advice for the triage side. And then for the hacker side, something like CrowdMatch is really great for getting you matched with the right programs that fit your skill set. You know, if you're a desktop application-based hacker, you're going to have a very different program. You don't want to hack web targets, right? You'll want to hack something else. They also support different payment methods. So things like cryptocurrency, or payment methods that the client just may not be able to really offer. And it's someone to go to if there are problems. So in Bug Crowd, you can appeal submissions. You can also ask support if you're having trouble with credentials on the client. There's a ton of support that the platform can give and kind of making that a bit easier. Though certainly there are clients who don't use platforms. And there are people who use other platforms as well, right? You don't have to be monogamous to a single platform. I would honestly recommend signing up to all of them, sign up to BugCrowd and their competitors, because then you just have access to everything, right? You're not like tying yourself down. So what do companies get as a benefit? Well, one, they can set a budget. This is, I think, the primary benefit of Bug Bounty and setting up a proper program is that they can say, look, we have you know, $10,000 pay for the most severe vulnerabilities if the risk is lower or there's no findings they don't need to pay that can just roll over i don't know if i've seen anybody ever find no vulnerabilities on a client like no client is that hardened certainly they think they are they can set a scope and get hackers to focus on certain areas you can kind of imagine them going oh i would like to see more people focused on our android application or our ios application so I'm going to offer a bonus to that. Or they can just take things in and out of scope as they're being worked on. Having more eyes on their software is another big advantage for companies because they can take advantage of this big distributed pool of hackers. You know, these are people who live in other countries, who have a very different point of view, who might be neurodiverse and they have a completely different way of thinking. So there are quite a lot of benefits for a company, though I will say there is also, you know, a lot of discussion about how to run a bug bounty program. It's not really something you can just set up and just kind of not actively manage. There is a bit of how do you engage with the community? How do you make sure that the people hacking your software are like the best hackers? How can you kind of motivate them? Like, there's a lot there. We're not going to go into that. This is for hackers, not for people wanting to manage programs. Though I will say, if you do happen to manage a program, I love a bug bounty treasure map. Like, when they show you how stuff works, fantastic. Please do more of that. So I'm interested. What do I need? You do not need a specific operating system or hardware. I've heard of people who have found bugs just with their phone, right? Like, this is not something that requires anything specialist. You can use an old computer. It's going to get annoying, but... I promise it'll be fine. You d you don't need Cali or anything like that. Honestly, all you really need is a willingness to learn. So there are two free pieces of stuff. Well, there's three now, actually, because there's Kaido. Burp Suite Community Edition. So this is the free version of Burp Suite. You can absolutely find bugs with a free version. I did it for 12 months and I got a fair amount of bounties, right? Like, easily. My first bounty I got with Burp Suite Community Edition would be enough to pay for Burp. Like, that's the kind of level of, of like, money we're talking here. So, like, you don't need to pay for it. 
There's also OWASP Zap, so I think we will cover that a little bit just to show you some of the differences. There's also Kaido as well, which is currently in beta, but hopefully will come out of beta and I can add to this list. Again, all you need to do is waste your time, not your money. Do not pay for anything until you get that first bounty. That is my recommendation. Use your first bounty, spoil yourself, buy yourself Burt Premium, buy yourself a fancy laptop. That's what I did. I also bought myself a, a hacking iPad so I could do more iOS hacking. So do it like later on in your career. So what are we going to learn in this series? We are going to cover how to use common hacking tools, Burp, Nucleate, Amass, Postman, Graphical. We're going to be talking about some of the perks of Bug Crowd, how you can move from one platform to Bug Crowd, how you can find a target on Bug Crowd, how you can kind of understand the scope and really maximize your chances of finding a bug. We're going to cover some specialist skills like recon, API hacking, and mobile apps. We're going to look in depth at specific vulnerabilities, cross site scripting, to direct object references or IDOs, authentication type vulnerabilities. So we are going to dig into all of that. We're also going to cover kind of bug bounty skills. How do you choose a target? How do you approach a new asset? What kind of mindset do you need? You know, that stuff that's way more about kind of increasing your chances of finding a bug. And we'll also talk about luck and the role that luck plays in bug bounty hunting, because certainly your first bug definitely does pay a little bit of a role in finding your first bug. But later on, the luck the, or the, your skill takes over at your luck. So for homework, and yes, this is a course, so it does have homework. And so next week, we're going to be talking about how the internet works. So I'd love you to have a bit of a research and read around, you know, what's a request, what's a response. What is actually happening when your browser loads a website? How does it know what uh, your display and what color things are? And how does the website know who's logged in? How does it know that you're logged into your account, not somebody else's? We're going to be talking about all of that next week, the kind of fundamentals of the internet. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope you are excited about this new series like I am. Thank you very much to Bug Crowd for enabling this. It would not be possible without them and they've also agreed to let me do some 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 like interesting stuff so i'm really excited to be here i'm really looking forward to providing this all the episodes are going to be completely free on youtube on my youtube channel and the bug crowd youtube channel there will be a write-up that accompanies each kind of phase of this and of course those live streams as well close to the time we'll start talking about when those live streams are and what we're going to be covering, but I really do encourage you to hack alongside me, and we can find your first bug together, right? Like, let's do it. So I am very excited to be bringing this to you all, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, everyone.